If you're here for electrolysis hair removal, sorry, wrong video. But I'm going to start with a bonus tip. You're going to need some sacrificial metal to do this. And I've got some perfect steel here, but it's galvanized. So I'm going to use some distilled vinegar to strip that off. Just take a few hours. But underneath is the ideal surface we need for electrolysis to work on our manifolds. So I'll just quickly show you the eBay listing uh, without showing you the seller details or how much I paid for them. Uh, but this is what's in the box and you can see they're a little bit rough But I'm sure it's nothing we can't sort out This channel's uh, not really one much for doing unboxings because well, We don't really unbox anything I suppose Let's see what we got here Loads of packaging. Oh nice there individually wrapped which is good news I do like a conscientious eBay seller it is appreciated I must say this is um, for a 12 valve this is the AAA engine code so it's not for mine I just I was just looking for um, exhaust manifolds in general for VR6 and saw these for a reasonable price. Okay, that's the first one. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's just get some light on this. Oh. So I've probably been sat in someone's shed or something for years. Let's have a look at the other one. I'm, just, I'm, worried, I'm, I'm sure they're okay, but I'm more worried about them being cracked or damaged. They do that first one, it certainly looks okay. Very well packaged, I'm impressed. Uh, let's get rub the light again. Same kind of story, very sooty on that one. So we'll get the uh, gear together and I'll just run through what I'm going to do. To set up your electrolysis workstation you're going to need a part to clean, a container to hold your water, some sacrificial metal, a power source and some soda crystals which I think I've run out of. I'll have to go get some. And some soda crystals. Here we are, uh, nearly 48 hours later. I noticed that the reactions had stopped in the tank, so I've pulled it out. You can see that the distilled vinegars removed about three quarters of the plate and the rest that's on there you can just I reckon I can just scrub that off with something but that's going to give us a nice clean steel uh, surface area to act as an anode in the electrolysis setup. Before I uh, put the part in the tank I'm just going to take it outside give it a quick prep knock off all this rust it's, uh, it's not too bad but uh, if we can get all the loose off especially around these threads It'll just um, make the uh, the process a bit easier. It'll take a bit of the heavy lifting off the tank. And I'm also going to do the bit of sacrificial metal. This is just a steel plate I've been using many times for this. Uh, because rust isn't a good conductor, you need to clean all this off before you use it or else it's not going to do its job properly. After prepping you can see the manifolds already start to turn back to its natural black metal color and the plates come up reasonably well but this is where you really want a shot blaster to get into all those little pits 
Um, I could have used a wire brush attachment on a drill, but I don't think it's going to make a massive difference. We've got most of it off, and I've cleaned off one corner just so I can make sure I can get a good contact when I uh, connect the power supply up. Here's the tank, almost set to go. I've got the part in, I've got the sacrificial metal in. Uh, I'm using these two bits of wire as my connectors so that I'm not putting the um, crocodile clips directly in the tank. I've secured these two together with a bit of wire and um, where the contact points are, I've just rubbed away with a, a little file just so it's got a good contact. Um, done similar on this side, although I'm not entirely happy with the connection because it's um, it's a little loose. I was hoping to find a spare 17mm nut I could just wind down to really send that home, but all I've got is the, the nuts that came on the studs, and I don't really use those because um, they've got some kind of coating on as well, so that could be lost in the electrolysis process. So uh, all we've got to do now is add our soda crystals that should do and then add the water so the water's in uh, I've actually used warm water uh, I don't think it makes a massive difference but I just tend to think that warm water would help the uh, process happen a bit quicker um, it's cloudy at the minute because I've just put the the water over the top of the soda crystals that'll settle down you it'll go clear in a little while and I will do a water change at some point. I'll probably come back in 6, 12 and 24 hours, something like that, and check on, on its progress. So I've turned the power on. It's been running for probably about two minutes. And on the positive side, you can clearly see there's already quite a lot of uh, activity. So I'm going to come back in a few hours, and we'll check on the progress and see what's happening. And this is what it looks like after about six hours. So what I'm going to do is change the water, take the part out, have a quick look, and then set it going again, probably overnight. So I'm just gonna I'll leave it in the tank just to show you that I've not done anything else with it, but um, you can already see this thing's come up absolutely amazing already. It's even clean inside. So I think what we're gonna do is definitely just let it run again for a few more hours. And um, I reckon this is gonna come up like pretty much like brand new really good result and we're not even finished yet so just before we go for round two on this one i've uh, dried it off with a heat gun so you can see like the natural color underneath and put it next to the one that we haven't dipped yet so you can see like a before and after so far it's going to go in with the um the piece turned around 180 degrees so it gets a chance to get into all these like crevices there's a few spots around here but i, I reckon over the next few hours this is going to come up like new and uh, it's going to be a really good result. And tomorrow, uh, in the daylight, I'll get it outside and we'll have a proper look at it. Now we're 12 hours on from the last time you saw it in the tank. And surprisingly, there's still quite a lot of activity in there. But let's um, turn it off, pull it out, and I'll have a look in the, uh, the daylight. So this is the result so far. I've just used a, a wire brush to take the surface residue off. Uh, there's still a few bits of rust deep down inside the odd crevice, which is probably why there was um, still activity in the tank. So I'm gonna dip it again for another few hours and uh, I think that'll be it. A few hours later and the last remaining areas lifted off enough, I could scrub them up with some wire wool. And to finish, I wiped them over with a very light coating of oil to prevent re-rusting while in storage. If you've never done this before, then I suggest you start with something small like rusted bolts or a small bracket and work your way up to larger, more complex parts. An easy way to remember which way around the terminals go is the negative side goes on the part you want to de-rust, as you want to minus the rust. There will be a little transfer between the two materials, so as the rust transfers off, the sacrificial metal will transfer onto your part, and over time, the sacrificial metal will be eaten away. It won't damage a part like shot blasting wood, but it is a slow process and there will be small amounts of oxygen and hydrogen given off so make sure you're well ventilated and if you want to see how i made the art for the thumbnail for this video i'll leave a link here somewhere and any questions let me know